Hi guys, welcome to another Pushing Polygons. Today we're talking about FTC leaks on Microsoft hardware for mid-gen and next-gen. We're going to get into some of those little juicy morsels and we're going to be talking a little bit about controllers and what does Microsoft have planned for the future? We're going to do a little speculation after we talk about what the paperwork says and stay tuned for that next. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started by talking about the new consoles, at least as they are leaked in the documents. Do take all this with a grain of salt as there was a Phil Spencer tweet that came out about an hour ago from when this is being recorded. He had a few things to say, all this stuff that was leaked today, but you know, we like talking about hardware. We like talking about video games. So we're just going to go over this a little bit. So this is going to be a uh, refresh of the Xbox Series S and uh, X for the rest of the Gen 9 generation. Big upgrades here is going to be a change in the I.O. for to Wi-Fi 6E. Uh, this is the latest standard of Wi-Fi prior to Wi-Fi 7 coming out. Um, that most likely really won't uh, get ubiquitous until sometime in late 2024 or early 2025. So I would expect that standard on the next gen Xbox uh, and the next gen PlayStation uh, certainly um, not going to show up here, but we can see that this document says uh, 6E. Now they do talk about power reduction and uh, new low power states. Now, unlike the PlayStation 5, which has already moved to a 6 nanometer process, uh, there is some talk in the documents that this is what Microsoft is going to be doing. This will be their 6 nanometer upgrade on their AMD chips and uh, that they're going to start using more modern I.O. USB-C, which we saw Sony do with the PS5. Now, one thing here, and of course, this is just a mock-up. This isn't necessarily what the final design is, but what do you think of Microsoft going from the Xbox to the X cylinder, as this would be a circular design no disk drive on this one, so that has other implications that we will talk about a video which uh, I will tag up in the upper right hand corner of this uh, video. If you want to go see that, it's going to be about digital, or excuse me, it's going to be about physical media being dead. What else can we say about this console here? You know, the expected price would be $499, keeping it in line now without the disk drive. Um, unless they are putting more RAM in this thing to offset, I think they should drop the price on that. And uh, the one other thing that was being talked about here, and I don't know that... I, I haven't seen this myself, so definitely take this with a grain of salt, is... Um, that there is talk about phasing out the disc version of the Series X in favor of a digital Series X, which again goes into that other conversation and, uh, well, um, definitely has some implications for the industry. The other thing to talk about with this um, console is that it is going to finally be offered in two terabytes. That's a big thing, as especially as console games are getting bigger. And ABK does finally close. You know, those Call of Duty uh, saves definitely aren't small. So having those larger drives especially are going to be so important, uh, especially coming later into the generation as bigger and bigger games start getting put out there. Now, the console is supposed to be bundled with a new controller. And again, we're going to talk about that a little bit later after we talk about the Series S. 
So the Series S here now, just like the new Series X, is probably going to be moving to the 6 nanometer. So we're talking a little more efficient, at least as far as power goes, probably a little more powerful. Well, I mean, it's you either get the power drop from coming down in the package size of a chip or you get performance. I mean, you can take a little bit of combination of each, but the trade-offs are not linear um, for power to performance. So, you know, you either take one or the other uh, at their extremes. Uh, so you can either get 20 less percent of power moving from seven to six, or you can uh, get... Uh, more performance. Uh, of course, you know, clock for clock performance would be better, but that is a deeper discussion. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to have a deeper discussion about how CPUs are made and um, how this affects uh, each console, because there are things to be said, of course, about what they call custom designs, uh, but basically going from one node to the next, at least as you come down in size with the uh, power, power savings versus the uh, performance discussion. Now, this is going to be priced uh, supposedly at $299. It will also have one terabyte and new Bluetooth and, you know, uh, Wi-Fi 6E. Is, and there was no, as you can see, the, at least in the slides, there's no redesign of the um, Series S. Now, um, we're going to talk a little bit about next-gen hardware. So, and again, this goes into, uh, you know, CPU nodes. Do take note here that uh, Microsoft does uh, differentiate in all this between a fiscal year and a calendar year. Um, and you'll see that most likely in the next slide. But uh, some of the big things here is there is a discussion of whether or not Microsoft would abandon uh Zen um, or X64 and go with an ARM processor. Uh, at this point, I guess I'm not quite up on where ARM is. Um, there are a lot of things with uh, ARM um, that X64 processors don't have to deal with. I think one of the biggest things, though, that Microsoft would have to consider if they switched over to and ARM architecture is that um, most of the games that are currently out there now would then have to be either ported in some sort of process or they would have to be emulated as ARM64 does not carry any of the baggage that uh, Zen 6 X64 does as there is an x86 component which continues to allow for uh, backwards compatibility with um, older 32-bit apps, which, I mean, you'd have to go back to uh, Xbox 360, Xbox um, One, potentially. That might have been a 64-bit uh, processor. I'd have to go back and research that. But there's some backwards compatibility with the IP there. So um, performance, power, compatibility, those are probably things that are under consideration when we're talking about X64 versus ARM64. Um, Zen 6, of course, is rumored to be big little. This is going to be similar to uh, what Intel currently does with their chips. So you have fewer big performance cores um, and a lot more little efficient cores. Um, given the state of video game uh, technology, I don't know if that is um, really going to take hold by the time that these consoles um, launch. I mean, you know, either hardware's got a software usually follows hardware, so maybe this would uh, spur. Uh, developers into that discussion but it's you know that's going to be um, hard to say right now because the work that Intel and uh, Microsoft have done in Windows 11 with the um, scheduling of those cores and if AMD is going that way like you know more professional development will uh, take advantage of it before games do. I mean, right now, I mean, the big talk in the last few weeks is how that 
Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty is going to finally take advantage of all eight CPU cores, um, which is a huge thing. So I, I don't know if we as a gaming community development side um, are really going to be ready for that big little discussion, even, you know, six, seven years down the road. I, I, I think we need to get there on the uh, eight core discussion and, and get these games optimized for more cores um, long before they get into that. GPUs uh, co-designed um, or with AMD or, or licensed. I mean, that's nothing new. This is things that they do now. Um, one thing that they do talk about is the uh, Machine learning silicon. Now, machine learning silicon is going to be in next gen Intel. It's going to be, uh, it's something that AMD is also looking into and probably, well, I don't know if there's a probably about it, is more efficient in getting better quality uh, upscaling. Uh, so your FSRs, your DLSSs, your ray tracing, it's going to be um, far more um, efficient than using a software, uh, based solution. So, uh, they definitely probably are going to look that way, especially as, uh, Nvidia and the other, um, uh, and the other graphics holders are pushing more and more toward, uh, ray tracing and, um, and at some point real time, uh, ray generation. So, but again, um, we're still maybe a decade away from uh, real-time ray generation. So, and, and then down here in the graphics innovations, you know, they talk about um, super ML super resolution. And then um, they do talk a little bit about uh, micro polygon rendering optimization. So here we're, we're probably looking at things like Nanite uh, from the Unreal Engine and... Um, all the additional uh, polygons and triangles that are um, in these tiny, tiny um, um, geometric land shapes that they can do. Like, you know, they can in that big demo where the person was starting in the cave, they had a bunch of rocks and there's, you know, there's all kinds of triangles there. So, you know, they we, we've seen that Unreal Engine 5 is not been uh, very kind to current hardware, so optimizations there. You can see, of course, dynamic global illumination. And uh, there was there is definitely some talk about um, compatibility with ML uh, in the cloud. So th this is a uh, hybrid... Um, hybrid computing now one thing i have to say about ml in the cloud um and its uh, ability to help um console gaming this is similar to what they did with crackdown 3 and i'm gonna let the clock i'm gonna let the crackdown 3 folks uh speak for themselves in that regard crackdown 3 will blow up the way you play games today by introducing a revolutionary new multiplayer experience using 100% destructible environments. By connecting to the Microsoft Cloud, play with 20 times the computational power of your Xbox One and experience unrelenting destruction and mayhem. It's not just what you can do with a gun. It's the opportunities you can create with destruction. And now that they've spoken for themselves, you know, this is what they were trying to do is, is that there's so much more computing that we can have in the cloud and, and going back and forth with the client. They've tried it. They failed. You know, that was, um, that was five, six years ago. By the time these console come, these consoles come out, it'll be about a decade little more than a decade since they last tried. Technology uh, with machine learning has certainly come a long way. But the question is for you guys, if you've gotten this far in the video, do you want a console that really has to connect to the cloud to get 
everything out of the game. Now, in Crackdown, the idea was the um, servers were going to help with the destruction of the world and, and, you know, the deforming geometry of the environment. Um, now, do you want that? Do you, do you care if the cloud is controlling the AI and maybe that can make the AI smarter because there's all kinds of computing power that uh, Microsoft can potentially uh, put to bear on uh, that kind of thing? Um, again, this um, would, in theory, require Microsoft to keep more chips for themselves and, and put into servers versus giving out to the public, but that's another discussion for another day. The question really is, is are you prepared for all of your games to actually require an internet connection so that they can be played? Or do you want the ability to say, okay, well, uh, internet's down for two hours, at least I can still play. These are going to be the trade-offs which the consumer is going to have to decide on. Again, I look way back. This, to me... Uh, rings that even though we've had leadership change, even though we've had uh, a different way of going about things, that Microsoft has not changed the plan that they started with back with Don Matrick. Don Matrick was just 10 to 15 years ahead of the time. So... As we swing back around for the 10th generation of consoles, it's going to be interesting to see if the public is ready for that type of acceptance. But moving into uh, this slide, you can see release dates of uh, the consoles. Um, there is also um, a... Well, I, I thought there was a note, but you anyway, you can see this here. They talk about more storage options. Uh, Sebel is the controller. And um, here there is a roadmap, basically, of the design for their CPU and their GPU and, and talking about, um, so, like, uh, under the consumer devices section, when you get closer to launch, of course, you see MP, that's mass production. You've got uh, Evolution 1, Evolution 2. So this is when they've decided on a design of uh, consoles. So uh, again, you can see that there are, uh, these are set up in calendar years. So um, they are looking for launch of this thing in the latter half of uh, 2028 um, for the console. So we're looking probably around holiday time 2028. Um, now the ARM 64 decision um, uh, now, and we'll get to the Phil Spencer comment here in a minute. The ARM 64 decision um, should have been reached by this point on whether they are going to go with that. And, um, they should be moving forward toward an SOC design um, by by this time. They would have already gotten uh, some feedback from uh, first party and third party um, uh, folks. And then, of course, dev kits wouldn't go out till uh, a year, year and a half. And this is even before uh, Silicon is uh, finished uh, taping out. Now, A0 Silicon um, is typically is typically the Silicon that um, is going to have the most bugs. You'll have A1 um, uh, or, or B0, which will be a second tape out of the Silicon, which will be closer to what they're looking for. Um, again, that's not going to be till 26, uh, first half of 26 and then uh, second half of 26. So we still have a long way to go. Um, the most interesting, the most interesting um, part of all of this to me, um, at, at least uh, here is, you know, we see that there is normal game production through uh, from calendar year 24 through um, the second, well, the first half of calendar year 26. 
And then there seems to be this porting um, for Gen 10 that's going to start in um, in second half of 26. So we're talking almost um, two years before the new consoles launch. And perhaps that is some sort of uh, backwards compatibility, or maybe that is a uh, road stopper just in case they are going ARM64 to bring some of the Gen 9 games over. Because as I said again, ARM64 doesn't have that backwards compatibility and is going to be a bit of a different beast than uh, what the Zen processors currently uh, operate at on that x86-64 node. With that said, uh, let's move on to the controller. Now, this is a really exciting part for me because I'm a big fan of the PlayStation 5 controller and the PS5 controller you know, some people like it, some people don't. I love Astrobot. Astrobot is such a demonstration of what the PS5 DualSense controller is capable of. And the resistive triggers. Now, again, I can see not liking resistive triggers if you're into a um, multiplayer uh, esports type of game. However, I do in a single player experience, if you're talking about Forza or, you know, in, in the PlayStation's case, uh, we're talking about Gran Turismo, the, the feel of hydroplaning or the tire on the side of the track, it, just the way that the controller feels, it, it, it makes you feel like you're in a car. Like I have never been more immersed in a game uh, than when playing with some of Sony's first party titles with that controller. It's, I mean, it's amazing. So Microsoft is talking about having more precision haptic feedback. So this is again, probably along the lines of what Nintendo and Sony have done with the next generation of what we used to call them rumble packs or um, a rumble uh, ability. Uh, it's going to have an accelerometer, uh, quieter buttons and thumbsticks, and I believe somewhere here on this slide there is a, yeah, there's discussion of uh, rechargeable and swappable batteries. I think that's good. If there is a Series 3 Elite, I think that type of compatibility should squeeze into that controller first. There was, all, there was also talk about changeable thumbsticks or replaceable thumbsticks. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, under durable and reliable new modular thumbsticks. So taking from the PlayStation Edge controller, that a great idea because I'll tell you what, uh, I have a Series 2 Master Chief uh, controller that is damaged and uh, wanted to get Microsoft to serv service the controller. You know, they told me, Oh, we'll service it, but chances are you're going to get a regular one back. We're we're not going to uh, we're not going to give you your limited edition controller back. So I was very disappointed in that. Lift to wake on here is excellent. You know, I'm wondering if that will turn on the console as well. Uh, it's going to have Bluetooth 5.2. So they're talking about play anywhere. So the Bluetooth should allow it to connect to any type of cellular phone that supports the Bluetooth uh, wireless spectrum. Uh, Xbox Wireless 2, I'm assuming that's going to connect direct to your console as, it, as it's an upgrade to the current Xbox Wireless proprietary specification. And, well, uh, you can see that they are going to have a new app which will allow for the direct-to-cloud pairing um, and managing of devices. So I think this is all really pretty impressive. Now, the one thing I want to bring up is that Phil Spencer did come out today and he said, you know, it's really disappointing that uh, all this stuff has gotten out there like this, that uh, this, this isn't the plan as it stands right now. Things have changed and... Um, yeah, we'll reveal it when we're ready to reveal it. So, uh, you know, the question is going to be is uh, some of this hardware stuff, is that going to um, continue? 
I, the controllers I can see, the consoles are um, up in the air because considering he's said time and time again we're not doing a uh, mid-gen console. But, you know, then again, uh, depends on how you define a mid-gen console. If the performance is no different um, and it's only a difference in storage option, I mean, even if you change the shape of the console, it's, uh, you know, it, it's like the chip of a, of uh, a Theseus. You know, how many boards do you need to change on the thing before it becomes a new thing? Or is it always the same old ship? And I believe that was the ship of Odysseus. Um, anyway, um, so that's uh, some of the really cool things that uh, I think are coming out of um, the leaks that came out today. What do you guys think? What else um, would you like in a mid-gen refresh or a next generation console? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And hey, uh, if you want to check out either unboxings of uh, some new games or if you want to further the discussion by checking out this video on whether physical media is dead, click here.